Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever is where you are, and welcome back to another episode on the Annoyed Dad channel. In today's episode, we are on to day number eight for the eggs that we are taking from hatching through to roasting, I suppose is one way to put it. But we're going to take them all the way through from the start through to the finish. As you can see, I've got the three incubators that are set up here. We have got the Octagon 10 from Brincy, Janelle 24, and the Arcom King Sorrow 20, which has got the goose eggs in it. So these are left in the corner of my dining room. You may be able to hear the TV in the background. That's the reason why I keep on talking, because I don't want any sort of like a copyright strike or anything going over the top of it. All I need to do with these is I just need to turn the Octagon a few times a day from side to side. And this one's quite good because it's got the flat sides, you're just able to turn it over like that. Um, no need to worry megally about turning, we only turn it three or four times a day, because you need to think about the eggs when they're in the nest with a chicken on them. The chicken will get up and will just move them about a little bit, she doesn't move them a lot, she moves them a little bit, and then she'll walk off and she'll leave them be, and then she'll come back to them and she'll sit down on them again some more and she'll just wiggle them a little bit. So we do that maybe three or four times a day. I know there are people who, who do it a lot more. The other two incubators, they are automatic. So the the King Sorrow one, that's always turning. That rocks backwards and forwards, like that, all the time. The reason why I'm doing the candle in now is because it's flat and it's easier to lift the incubator off of it. And the, uh, the Br uh, not the Brincy, the Janol, that actually slides along as we explained in the last one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and candle them and we're going to look at candling and we'll explain everything about candling and fingers crossed we're going to get some cracking images of some chicks that are starting to grow in the eggs. Okay, so if you've watched uh, any of my videos in the past where we've done eggs, you would have seen my candler. Now, the candler I use, uh, I don't believe they make them anymore. It's made by uh, AB Incubators Limited. And it's quite a good one, it's quite a powerful one. If we slide the top bit off, you can see just in there there is a bulb. It's a bit mucky around it. And that bulb is, get some of that muck. That bulb is the sort of one that would be in a down lighter that would be up in your ceiling. So it's quite powerful. It's got a nice bright light to it, you can see it there. And then in the top, we have the slide in piece, which has the different size holes for the different type of eggs. So you can go from goose, chicken, quail, and uh, well, quail on the end, and sort it out in between. So you slide it along, you basically get the side hole you want, and you shine it through. Now the reason why we candle eggs is to see which eggs are growing and which eggs aren't growing. You will very, very rarely get 100% hatch rate. It does happen, but it's quite rare. Um, normally you'll get one or two that you want to pull out. And the reason why you pull them out after a week is because if you imagine leaving an egg in a 30 degree heat, that egg can go mouldy, it can expand, it can explode within the incubator. And of course if you get an egg which explodes within the incubator, that's then going to put a lot of nasty bad stuff around all of the other eggs. And you don't want that sort of infection or nastiness around those eggs. You want to try to keep it as clean as possible. So, what if you don't have a big fancy candler like this one? Do you have a mobile phone? Because what you can do is you can use the torch at the back of your mobile phone. You see, I have to be careful because uh, I just realised I opened it up and my driving licence was in there. Uh, so I don't want everyone seeing all of my details. Uh, so yeah, you can use the, uh, the torch at the back of your mobile phone. Or you can go onto eBay and you can buy these little torches. Uh, you can also get them in most of the pound shops and that. This is actually a UV torch, so it's a, a little bit different. Um, but yeah, you can get the normal ones of these that are LED, and they're quite powerful. You just uh, stand them up like that, and then you can candle your eggs on the top of them. So yeah, they're quite good. So when we candle them, we are looking to see which eggs are growing, which eggs aren't growing. The ones that aren't growing, we're going to remove. The ones that are growing, we're going to go woohoo, and we're going to leave them in there. So, we are going to start off with the Octagon Incubator. I'm going to bring that in, we're going to open it up and we're going to go through all of the eggs and we're going to candle them. Like I said previously, we are going to do it 
within a reasonable time scale. We're not going to take our time about it, we're not going to hang about, but we're not going to rush either. As I said, the hen in the wild will be on her eggs and then she will get up, she will walk off, she will go and get some feed, she will go and get some water and she will come back. Eggs are quite used to being up to temperature and then the temperature dropping and then the temperature being brought back up. As long as you don't do it too often and as long as you don't mess about, you should be fine. The candling shouldn't damage the eggs, it shouldn't cause any issues, it shouldn't cause any problems whatsoever. So let's go and grab the first incubator and we'll have a look at the eggs. I won't show you every single egg, I'll show you the first few um, and I will show you if there's any that I think I need to point out but I won't show you every single egg because that would just be a massive long video and it'd be boring. Right, let's go and grab um, the incubator. Okay, so I've just taken the tray out, line you up there and then I go and kill the lights. Now luckily for me, I've still got light coming into the room so I can still see what's going on. Whereas you guys won't be able to. Okay, let me zoom in. So this is the first one. And let me get you centered. Okay, so there is a little bit of something going on just down that bit there. So I'm going to leave that one in. Okay, so I'm not sure how well that's coming out, but there are veins that are running through that one. So that's another good one. That's one that's certainly doing something. Okay, this one. Let's see, it's a little bit of an odd shaped one. I really shouldn't have put it in. But you can see how it's just glowing like a light bulb. There is no resistance in there to stop anything from uh, any of the light getting out. But it's also an odd shaped one. That one shouldn't have really gone in. But that one's an empty one. Okay, so now then this one here. Let me see if I zoom you in. Will it pick up the veins? There's veins again in that one. You can see them just running around the inside of the egg there, so that means that there's a nice chick growing in that one. Okay, so from that tray of 10, there I have pulled out one, which I really shouldn't have put in in the first place. I don't know why I put it in, uh, because it's clearly an, odd, an oddly shaped one, and when you hold it, you can feel that it's um, not quite right. So that's only taken a couple of minutes in all. And what we're going to do now is we are going to place the eggs straight back in again. I'm not actually using any water in these um, because there's no need to because the relative humidity around here is enough to keep it going. But I'll explain humidity in another video. So um, these eggs are now going to go back. They're going to be plugged back in. They're going to be put back exactly where they were in just a moment anyway because I've got to bring out the 24 and do that one. Um, and they are going to be left now up until day 18. So at the minute we're on day number seven, or is it eight? I can never remember. It's either seven or eight. Um, I'll look it up and I'll put it up on the screen if I remember. So we are there and we are going to go all the way through to day number 18 now. And then when it's on day 18, we'll do the candling again and we'll be able to see if there's chicks in the eggs and quite often you can see the chicks moving up bits like that. So anyway, I'm blabbering. Let's get on with the other ones and see what we can see. So these are the ones in the Janelle 24. As you can see, it's the ones that have still got little bits and pieces of dirt on them. The ones with poo on and various other bits and pieces. So uh, yeah, let's take a look. And I probably won't show you every single egg again because there's no point in me showing you every single egg. And we'll have a look back at the end and we'll see what we've got. Okay, I've just stopped it on this egg because I've been trying to get this to show up on camera. And it's been a nightmare to get it to show. But, if you look just there, there is that little black spot. And off of that black spot, you can see all of the veins coming out. Oh, cracky, let the camera focus back in. So it looks like a spider's web. 
See if I can turn it and if it will keep it in focus. There you go. So the black dot, see it just moving about there? That is the start of the chicken. That is a week old chicken that you can see moving around in the egg. There's not, not very much there. But um, yeah, that black dot moving, that is it actually moving within the egg. That isn't um, anything being done uh, on the camera or anything else like that. And those veins are the veins that go around the egg and you'll be able to see those when it hatches out. So yeah, just because this one caught on camera and just because it is a really, really good example, I just thought I'd show you it. Please ignore the other black dots that are around everywhere because that's the dirt that's on the egg itself. Um, and you can see the air sac glowing just at the bottom that bit down there. So right, I just thought I would show you that one because I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so that's the Janelle 24 done. Uh, I think it was that one just there that I just stopped it on and showed you the egg. Uh, and out of that one I've removed four eggs. So we've got the one which came out of the octagon and then we've got the four there. Now as I said with the other one, these guys are going to go back they're just going to be left. They're not going to be touched. We don't have to do anything to them. We don't have to check anything. They are literally just going to be left where they are until day 18. So I'll get these ones back and then we've got the goose eggs to go and I'm crossing my fingers and hoping and praying that we've got some little goslings growing. But we will see. Right, let's get these back out there. Okay, so we're now on to doing the geese from the uh, Archon King Sorry 20. And obviously the goose eggs are bigger so whilst I could still use that size hole for the geese, I'm actually going to slide it up to the biggest hole to allow for the maximum amount of light. I'll admit I am so nervous about this because last year we didn't have any that were fertile whatsoever. So let's just raise you up. There we go. Right. Should we have a look and see? All right, we've got seven eggs in total. And just kill the lights. Looks empty to me. Let's try number two. <gasps> Can you see it? Just there. Like we did with the chickens. The little black dot with the spider's web coming out of it. That's what you're looking for. Number two. And yeah, that one's empty, unfortunately. That one's got something going on in it. has that one there and last one bosh look at that again can you see that that being picked up on the camera let me just zoom it in a little bit well it's great how the camera focuses in and it picks it up and then all of a sudden it doesn't that would So can, hopefully the camera can pick that up. You see the little black dot in the middle and all the veins coming off of it. That's a little gosling growing in there. <laughs> Excellent! We got fertile geese. That's always good to know. Right, let's put the lights back on. Ugh, blinded. Okay, so there we go. So I've removed one. I've got one that I believe... Let's sort out the camera again. As you can go down there we go so I've removed one it's just at the back there you can see it just at the back there and I've got the other six in there 
I believe that that one there might also be infertile as well, but I'm going to leave it in there just for the time being um, because with geese, they obviously take longer than the chickens to hatch and I'm candling these at the same time as I start to candle the chicken eggs but typically with geese you'd normally leave it a couple of days longer you'd normally wait to maybe day number 10, day number 12 so as you can actually see that there is stuff happening now obviously you saw that we are able to see that there is stuff happening with some of them but to be absolutely 100% sure you'd normally wait to about day 10 but what I'm going to do now is because I've got that space in there today when I was down at the yard I picked up excuse the sky news alert we're just in the middle of this corona thing and the phone's always going off I should put onto silent before I started so today when I was down at the yard I was able to save this one before the seagulls got to it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a pencil and I'm just going to write today's date on it and then I'm just going to slide that into there as well so what I will do is when it comes to the time of hatching the other ones I'll know that one there's still a week behind so I'll be able to either take that one out and place it into another incubator or I'll be able to take these guys out and place them into a hatcher hope that makes sense okay so here we go this is it after the candling they're all back in they're all back on the uh, the Brincy octagon here that just gave me a bit of a a bit of a scare because I don't know why but it's uh, it's light wasn't coming on the light just at the end here um, to indicate that it's actually on and working or as it flashes and it wasn't doing anything so that gave me a little bit of a scare so I've just had to sort out that and I don't know what the problem was I just unplugged it and plugged it in somewhere else and it seems to be working okay so as I say this is day number eight and we are just going to leave these now and we will come back to them at day 18 for the chickens and we'll also do the geese as well on day 18 um, may as well because on day 18 is when they go into lockdown but literally they just get left now um, we don't do anything with them we just leave them Obviously we're going to turn the octagon a few times a day, but other than that, nope, that's it, we just leave them. You don't open them, no need to check them, no need to inspect them, no need to do anything. Obviously if you come over and there starts to be a bit of a smell, or if you look through and you can see one of the eggs is um, erupting, then yes you would intervene, but otherwise, no, just leave them be and um, yeah, just wait and see basically you've just got to be patient unfortunately it's only three weeks to wait so uh, it's not too bad so um yep yeah, right that's it for this video uh, any questions queries comments leave them down below make sure you check out the rest of this series because we are taking them from eggs right the way through to fully grown chickens and it's happening as it happens basically and I am highlighting everything that we do and you are you are seeing everything that I do um, so I haven't done anything to them ever since the last video up until this video and I won't do anything to them up until the next video and I will highlight everything and I will show you everything at this time there isn't very much happening but as soon as we get onto the stage where they start to hatch and then they start to grow that's when you start to get more videos and that's when more stuff starts to happen and that's of course the really really fun bit because you get little tiny chicks so uh, yeah cheers for watching please like please comment please subscribe please share please tell all of your friends about so uh, anyway yeah that's it for this one bye bye